gender roles have changed mm. and that women are adopting, emulating men. Mm. And my thinking is not speculative, nor is it based on personal prejudices, misogynist as I am. <laughs> it's based on, uh, on studies that have shown that women describe themselves mm. eight times more in masculine terms than they used to in 1990. The problem with women is they have emulated the, the wrong role model. They have emulated, imitated, psychopathic men, narcissistic men. And mind you, there are good men around. Not all of us are psychopathic and narcissistic, just the two of us. Okay. <laughs> so, this is as an aside. Yes, I think it has to do with uh, with changing self-perception. Mm -hmm. Not so much gender role, but self-perception. Women perceive themselves as masculine. I don't see anything wrong morally, um, socially, with sex work. I personally wouldn't date a sex worker, wouldn't have an intimate relationship with her, but I wouldn't have an intimate relationship with a, with a war journalist or with a soldier or with a hit woman. It's, there's a certain kind of personality which gravitates toward sex work. These are usually dark personalities, subclinical psychopaths and so on. And I don't want to have relationships with such people. It's not the sex work itself that's the problem. It's the personality behind the sex work. But sex work is selling certain body parts. And men have been doing this for millennia. In the construction industry, men are selling their muscles. In my line of work, in psychological counseling, I'm selling my brain. <laughs> I'm selling access to my brain. So a woman is selling access to her vagina. So what? Why? 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 Why is this a, a category all of all on its own? Either you condemn, blanket condemn, condemn the the sale of access to body parts, any body part, muscles, brains, genitalia, and so on, or all of them are equal, morally, and and uh, socially. So the judgment of sex work is patriarchal. It's, it's a social control, control tool. Men have instituted this condemnation of sex work in order to relegate prostitutes to a fringe, the fringes of society where they could be controlled and service the needs of the male population. It's a historical thing. It has nothing to do with anything objective. Actually, sex work is very beneficial to society. It takes off the market men who are incapable of dating or having relationships with women. It provides no strings attached, no complication sex. In my view, it reduces the incidence and prevalence of sex crimes. It's a very beneficial thing. It should be institutionalized. And indeed, in certain, in certain periods of history and in certain societies and cultures, Prostitution was institutionalized and even was held sacred, close to the gods. So this is this is a Victorian a Victorian hangover. And women who who end up being sex workers usually go through an earlier phase of promiscuity, indiscriminate sexual self-trashing and promiscuity, and they realize why not make some cash out of activities that anyhow they engage in. <laughs> so um, and and I, I think it's pretty dumb to give away your merchandise for free when you can make money out of it. As I said, everyone is a prostitute. I prostitute my brain. And condemning sex work is, is, is simply a men's way of controlling women. Um, sex workers, most sex workers actually report that sex work is empowering. They get to choose. Um, specific men as regulars. They get to meet fascinating men. They get to have a regular sex life, which many, many of uh, many sex workers are, are hypersexual. They have a very high sex drive. And so they get to have a regular sex life. They get invited to restaurants, bars, clubs. They travel all over the world and they often end up snagging a rich husband. I um, 
a rescuer type, a fixer type, you know, a savior type, like th taxi drive, driver, <laughs> Robert De Niro type in taxi driver. So they end up, you know, end up, end up well. They end up in their 40s and so on. They end up ensconced in a family structure. Few of them have children, according to statistics, but actually a, a, a lot, a substantial minority of, of uh, sex workers end up being married and, and off the market. And I forgot to mention, of course, that the sex workers who are into group sex and into kink and so on, I mean, sex work is the ideal venue to obtain all this. Now, I do make a distinction between sex work and promiscuity. Sex work is a choice. It sometimes is a last resort choice, but it's always a choice. Promiscuity is not. Promiscuity is not about how many sex partners you have. That's a common mistake. You can have a hundred sex partners and not be promiscuous. promiscuous. Promiscuity is about why you're having sex in the first place. If you seek sex for all the wrong reasons with all the wrong people, you're promiscuous. Promiscuity is, is also not gender specific. People tend to talk about promiscuous women. Men can also be promiscuous. Promiscuity is a behavioral pattern of resorting to sex for wrong reasons. For example, self-soothing, upholding and buttressing or restoring self-esteem, uh, wanting to be liked. We call these non-autonomous reasons. Wanting to belong, wanting to be accepted, trading, transactional sex, trading sex for free, a free drink or for a place to crash. This is all promiscuity. And promiscuity, as opposed to sex work, has only negative outcomes in every possible way. Promiscuity fosters anxiety, depression, and substance abuse. They are very closely correlated. And on the societal, on the social level, promiscuity renders men more entitled and more aggressive when they're turned down. Men have come to expect uh, sex within the hour. And if you don't get it, they feel rejected, and many of them become violent and so on. And so the incidents of sexual assault has skyrocketed. More than one quarter of women have been raped and one third have experienced sexual assault. These are unconscionable statistics. Like nowhere, no, nothing before. I mean, it's, it's unprecedented. And that's because women are putting out promiscuously and men have come to expect this. The promiscuous people have dark personalities. Most of them are subclinical psychopaths, exactly like sex workers. But as opposed to sex workers, their sexuality is dysregulated. It's out of control. It's a form of acting out. The sex worker is premeditated, planned, and utterly in control. Of course, a sex worker can come across a violent customer and so on, but this could happen on a date. 27% of first dates end with rape. So, People who are promiscuous are simply people who have lost control over the way they use sex, how sex is integrated in their lives. Promiscuity is addictive. Promiscuity is thrilling, dopaminergic. It involves novelty seeking. It involves reckless behaviors. It's a bit reminiscent of psychopathy. So it, it becomes an addiction and it's very difficult to get rid of it. Promiscuous people tend to relapse. I'll mention this in a second. And finally, promiscuous people engage in sex without intimacy, without meaning, without emotions. Promiscuous sex is basically physiological. It's like masturbating with another person's body. And this becomes an ingrained habit. It becomes an addiction which is bound to resurface at some stage, as I said before. And relapses in promiscuity are common. Promiscuous intimate partners are five times more likely to cheat. In, in the studies, promiscuity is defined as someone with 10 partners or more before the age of 30. I think it's too low a bar. I think it should be 20 or 30 partners, but it doesn't matter. Even with 10 partners, even with four partners, there's already a marked increase in the propensity to cheat. So promiscuous people are far more likely to cheat and they do it serially. They're serial cheaters. They are a lot more liable to be unable to commit to the relationship. 
and they break up 10 times as often as the general population. So promiscuous, teaming up, having an intimate partner who used to be promiscuous, that is seriously bad news. It means she or he will not be committed to the relationship, will cheat on you almost for sure, and will break up with you very often or, you know. So why, why go there? Promiscuity is a habit, an addictive habit. You should read the books by Kerry Cohen. It's an addictive habit. It rewires the brain. It stunts the development of relationship skills. Promiscuity conditions the practitioner of promiscuity to sever any connection between sex and true, profound, long-term intimacy and vulnerability. These are the foundations of intimate relationships. Promiscuous people have been desensitized, anesthetized, numb, numbed, and so they are then they, they go through the motions of sex like robots. They there's nothing there. And you can't just switch this off. You can't you can't suddenly be intimate and loving and caring and emotion full of emotions and so on in a single relationships out of fifty. Relationship out of fifty. You can't just switch on the promis switch off the promiscuity circuit. It's there, it's taken over your brain. You can't have emotion, emotional, fulfilling, meaningful and intimate sex after you have had 15 years of meaningless, emotionless and disintimate sex. There's no way of going back. And so sex positivity is counterfactual. It's, it's not true. It flies in the face of decades of cumulative research. Sex positivity is a pernicious and dangerous ideology that has ruined and is still devastating the lives of countless young men and women. And that's why I'm railing against it. I hope I made clear how I see things. I'm not against agentic sexuality. Even if you have multiple partners, if you're agentic, if, you, if it's choice, if you try to have a modicum of intimacy and connection, connectivity, nothing's wrong with it. If you're a sex worker, of course nothing's wrong with it. But self-trashing promiscuity, that's a mental health pathology. And implying otherwise in the writings and teachings of the sex positivity cult is very, very, very dangerous and wrong and should be somehow outlawed or criminalized or definitely removed from the curricula of universities, gender studies and so on. And today, sex positivity is taught in all the major universities and higher education institutes. It's not very different to critical race theory and there should be a movement against it, absolutely. 